Okay, folks, let's talk pie. Apple pie. One of my favorite snacks from uh, Burger King. I love this thing. But I'm just kidding, folks. We're not going to talk about the apple pie. This is my snack for later. We're going to talk raspberry pie. That's right, the raspberry pie model 3B+. Plus. This thing is the brain of the arcade cabinet and probably the brain to many, many retro pro projects out there. This is what we call a small computer. That's folks, a small computer. And I have some uh, technical stuff here that I downloaded to, to share with you guys. Now when you order this thing, this is under uh, 35 this is about $35 if not under when you order this thing you get a small little motherboard that's right this is a motherboard an actual computer motherboard and this right here is your SD slot let's zoom, zoom that in and right now I have the uh, a 120 128 gigabyte SD card in there with the uh, image that we need to run the Pi and this would be considered your hard drive on the computer the Raspberry Pi okay this is this thing was amazing when it first was introduced to me and and I have to say I haven't stopped using it buying it sharing it with everybody I know okay now let me give you a little information about this this little uh, computer has an it's an ARM Cortex A53 1.4 gigahertz CPU. It has one gigabyte of SRAM. Its Wi-Fi is a 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It also has an internet speed of 300 megabytes. If you notice right there, it has the Ethernet port plus four USB ports. So you got port one, and it, and it reads, it reads in that order, okay. You got port one, port two, port three, port four, okay. Port one would be the the main one we use. It is also, we also have a couple of other ports on the side here. We have the audio port. So if you decide to do external speakers, we have the HDMI port, so you get your visual. And we have your power port right here, where you plug in your power. You have your, uh, I'm looking at it right here, your Broadcom, uh, your Broadcom a CPU bo uh, chip there. Let's zoom into that. Gotta move there you go, your Broadcom CPU chip right there. Let me put you down so I'm not shaking so much. Where am I putting it? Right here. Right there. Okay, can I zoom in a little more? That's it. Your Broadcom CPU chip right there. Okay. And like I said, it's been clocked at a 1.4 gigahertz. Alright. You got that. What else can I tell you about this? Your Wi-Fi modular, which is over here. That's your Wi-Fi modular right there with the little Raspberry logo on there. And the Wi-Fi modular has an internet speed of what I said before, 1.2 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz. Okay. And it's a, and it also has its uh, IDE port, your GPO ports, right here. Where you can plug in your fan and your uh, your uh, fan, your uh, power switch, and about almost anything else that they've you know they could possibly do. I, I think they also use it for buttons, button controls, but you don't need that because uh, we're using the uh, no delay USB port from the uh, button setup, and we're gonna plug that in the port and. Uh, USB port right there. 
Now this thing is, is wonderful. It's powerful. It's great. I love it. But we can't just use it like that. We have to um put it put a case, put it in a case. So I purchased a uh, nine layer case with all the added extras. Um, I will put links for the pie as well as the case at the bo uh, underneath the video. Uh, the pie goes for about thirty five dollars. The uh, case, if I recall, it was about eleven, probably probably a little bit more. I doubt it. But these two can be reached at um, Amazon. You can get them both as a package deal. All right. Let's open up this case. Let's see what we got here. All right. We have the power cord, which I liked. Comes with a power cord, and it comes. The power cord itself comes with an on and off switch, so you can shut it off if you don't have another source of shutting it down. It actually has an on and off switch. I kind of like this uh, power cord because of that, as well as the fact that this cord is a five volt, 300 milliamp, which is enough power for the uh, Pi. Anything lower than that, you're going to get a low voltage lightning bolt on your screen. And you don't want that. Because the more stuff you add to the ports, the more um, power gets used and you will get that, that yellow screen. This this one I've noticed, no matter how much I put on the, uh, the Pi, I have not gotten the lightning screen with this power cable. And I've gone through some power cables. We have the case. Okay. Let's take it out the plastic. So you can see, it's like a rainbow colored case. I thought it was pretty cool, pretty nice. Okay, we also have the fan for the case and some heat sinks for the uh, Pi. It also came with a screwdriver and the instructions to put everything together. Okay, we have the instructions. Also a thank you card which I appreciate that, thank you. Good to know they appreciate their customers. All right. Now, I like this setup because of the fact that it came with all the added extras. It came with all the uh, added stuff. Most cases don't usually add that, and for the price, it was not bad. I gotta give it to, um, to Detroit Love, I hope he's watching this video. Let him know it's a shout out to him, and let him know that I appreciate him putting me onto this case and and what it has to offer. You get the three heat sinks, okay, that we're gonna put on the pie. It uh, helps prevent some heating on the pie. The fan also, which is a good thing, which takes the heat out of the case. And uh, another thing I like about the case, that it's very open. Like it's, it's, it's very aired out. It's got a lot of spacing, a lot of gaps, a lot of opening. So it, it gives, you know, it gives the pie room to breathe. Like if it's going to get hot, it's going to get cool because it's got all that, that, uh, that breathing, those breathing gaps. Now you got the four screws for the fan, the three heat sinks, okay. Got the instructions, okay. We're gonna put this little bad boy together. We're gonna start off by putting the uh, first two heat sinks on the pie, which will be right here on the CPU and also on another chip right there. Okay, we're gonna put those heat sinks on there. I'm gonna get a little uh, razor so I can peel off the, uh, the uh, paper of those stickers because they come with double sided sticky on there so we can get those on there we're going to use uh, one big one on the CPU one little one on that chip right there and another big one underneath to the chip right there of the pie okay so let's start with that first let's get that off of there Okay, we got that. Let me get um, also my my magnifying goggles. As I mentioned before, I'm a little blind. I like to 
have things up close to see better. Okay, so we remove the uh, paper off the uh, thing. Now we got a sticky side there. It doesn't matter which direction you put it, as long as you put it on there nice and and even. Okay, I think we got it on there, right? Once you got it on there, you you want to definitely give it a nice little a nice little press. Okie dokie. Nice little press right there. And you cover up the CPU, but it does help with the heating on there. Let me zoom that in so you can see. Okay. That's the heat sink on the CPU chip. Okay. Now we're going to put the other see uh, the other heat sink on the chip next there right behind the uh, USB ports. Okay, there you go. Got it off. And put it on that little chip right behind the uh, the USB ports put it as straight as you can right on top this will also depreciate heat let me show you that one let me zoom in Right there. Okay. So we got the heat sink on that. Press it in down a little. It's pretty good. The last one we'll leave after we put the the pie in the case because there's a square notch on the case in the bottom that helps you put it evenly. So we're gonna do that. Let's look at the instructions here. So we know what 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 order we're doing, even though it's put together already. You need to know where the at, at what point the pie falls in. So I think after the third layer. Okay. It's got four plastic screws holding it in. Holding it together. So you got four plastic screws, four plastic nuts. I'm separating them each, putting them aside. You don't have to use a screwdriver to tighten these up. They hand, you can hand tighten it. They're plastic. You don't want to overdo it. Okay. Kind of like this little rainbow case. It's pretty cool. I think my daughter will like it. All right, try to keep all the pieces together. Even though you separated with the screws, we're going to go flipping one at a time, each layer to the side, putting it backwards onto the uh, side here so that we don't lose it. The order, even though we have the instructions here, it's always good to do this out of habit so that we can know more or less where everything went now it's telling me after the third layer so you got first you got the bottom layer second layer third layer the pie will fall in that layer so we take the pie with the chip to the back and we drop it in there and it falls and fits in perfectly look at that it has its own little groove and it falls in there perfectly let me zoom that in so you can see that. Okay. You see that it fell, it fell into that. Nice and good. Doesn't move, doesn't dance around. It's right locked into that, that, that layer. Okay. Perfect. Now we're going to take back and put the rest of the pieces. The same way we took them off the order, 
we're going to go backwards. So we're going to take this piece and drop it in there. And you're going to see it's self-explanatory. Everything's going to fall. You know, you got the colors. First four layers of black, and then you got a red here. Clear, like a clearish red. You got a solid red. Looks pretty neat. You got a clear orange. You got a clear green. And you got the blue, but the blue we're going to leave aside. We're going to we're going to put the pie aside now cuz the blue one we're going to need to put the fan on. Okay? And we're going to need to know where to hook up the fan on the uh, GPO. Okay, and I got it. I'm going to do it on uh, GPO 4 and 6. Red to 4, black to 6 to give it that 5 volt speed, which is a faster speed. And we want that because we want to be able to uh, get that air in there good, you know. So we're going to do, so we're going to put the screw. We're going to put the fan to the blue layer with the sticker in. I think that's correct. The label of the fan should be facing the, the pie. So I guess the heat could come out. And we're going to do that. Okay. And we're going to use the four screws that it came with. And we're going to put the screws inward to out with the bolts on the outside. We want the bolts on the outside of the uh, of the uh, panel, the blue panel. We want those bolts on the outside so they're not hitting anything on the board. Okay. I'm going to hand tighten it for now. I'm going to do one corner and then the other so that things don't shift and move all over the place. Okay. Put that bolt on. There you go. Nice and hand tight. I'm going to use a screwdriver for this in a minute. Like I said, we're going to plug it in uh, GPO 4 and 6. Okay. And we have that. As red going to four, black going to six. Oh, let me tighten this with the screwdriver. So that it's nice and tight. You don't want this rattling out. God forbid. And a piece, a metal piece falls into the, the pie while it's on and causes a short. You don't want that. Okay, so now let's plug in the uh, the wire into the right GPOs. Red into four, black into six. Red into four, and black into six. And that'll give us the five volts of power for the fan which is what we want because we want it to flow hard fast okay and we start putting back those plastic screws to get all those together we got one on there we got one on there Let's tighten that up. Okay.
and tighten is just fine. You don't need to use any type of screwdriver or any type of tool for these because they're plastic. You don't want them getting messed up. Just keeping the pie together. It's not like you're going to be moving this around and dancing it around or anything like that. Now the pie has been used for a lot of projects other than what I'm using it for now. Um, I've seen it even been used as a uh, computer on a on a um, on a mirror, one of those uh, two-way mirrors. Okay, where they put the uh, either a, a a display on the back of the mirror, and they use the pie to run all the uh, software, like the weather and 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 internet and all that stuff, which is pretty cool. And, I've thought about doing something like that and maybe we'll do that in another DIY project just gotta get more information to do that probably another pie I think I buy I think this is like my um, fifth or sixth raspberry pie like I said they're, they're pretty cool and powerful for what they do and this is a 3B plus I know the 4 is on its way soon. I can't wait to get that one. You know, this one is as powerful as it can be. It has some issues with certain emulations. But that's fine. Like I said, I'm just using it for the classics that I like. The 8 bit, 16 bit classics that I grew up on. And that's it. This is the case. And the pie is in it. Okay. And I'm going to put this pie into the cabinet to test it out because this will be the pie that we're going to use at the final build. Okay? Got the fan. Look at the rainbow color. I think it's so cool. Okay? Got the HDMI set up. You got the uh, audio port. Okay? You got the HDMI and the audio port. At the power, you got the four USB ports, you got the Ethernet port, you got your fan. Okay, oh, and we forgot the uh, last heat sink, which is gonna fall right here. That last chip in the bottom, and we're gonna drop it right in there, and it should fall evenly. as we want it okay. now take this uh, paper off the heat sink and drop it in that little box and hopefully get it perfectly even alright we're gonna drop that in there. There you go. That box allows you to drop it in there nice and evenly. No moves, no gaps. Put a little pressure on that so it sticks. Look at it now. Yeah. Pretty good. There you go in there perfectly couldn't get any better it cut that out just perfect put a little pressure on there it'll hold you're not gonna take this apart again everything's on the way you want it like I said nice little rainbow color pretty cool we're gonna put this in the uh, cabinet test it out do a little more tweaking to the image while it's in the cabinet through the Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi uh, connects to my network and I'll be able to see what's going on okay so let's do that next unfortunately uh, I had to do a little modification to the uh, the case when I went to go test fit everything um, third layer from the top which is the orange layer right here, I don't know if you can notice it 
I had to Dremel out a piece off because of the HDMI cable that I'm using. It wouldn't let me go all the way in, and I wanted to get full connection, and I wouldn't get video, you know, full connection if, unless I did that. So you may have to just notch off about an inch right above the HDMI, just the second layer of this case. You know, you may cut it off a little bit. You could use a uh, a Dremel. Um, I used a Dremel from Harbor Freight, a real simple one, a little baby one. I'll, I'll put a link in the bottom. But just like an inch, you just need an inch from um, right here to here on that second, on that third layer from the top down of this these cases. Okay, and and I hope they're watching this and they, they, they see that little flaw because most HDMI cables has has a thickness at the end. So, you know, it, it prevented me to go through. I had to do it to uh, two of the cases, and I didn't think I had to do it to this one, and, and I was wrong. But it's a simple cut. You know, it doesn't mess anything up. The case is still in perfect condition, you know, other than that modification. And, we, we, you know, we're going to put it in and, and check it out. We're going to replace the uh, test pie with this pie and see how everything working out and tweak it up. Thank you. Okay, so we're back at the pie. And I switched out the uh, test pie and put in the uh, the uh, original pie that we're going to use. This is going to be the final pie that we put on here. Let me zoom in a little bit on this so you can see. Okay. And like I said, the uh, connection on the uh, HDMI port was a little thicker. So it didn't you know, fit in there right. So I had to cut that notch off so that you could... Uh, Get that HDMI. We're gonna mount everything in a few minutes. I just want to test everything, make sure uh, the pie is, is running good. We got the uh, power to the pie. We got the USB uh, board to the pie. We have. Um, we could actually. Um, we should put the H the uh, LED lights. Let's test that out too. Make sure that's still working, even though it's gonna hang a little here. Let's test that out. Let it hang a little there. Everything's hanging there. Well, we will mount it in a minute. Just want to test it. We're going to make sure everything's working. Um, this is the first time I put this pie to this case, to this uh, cabinet. So it may ask for the control settings again. So we're going to have to do that. Let's boot it up. Let's get some sound up here. So we can see. Okay. Our LED lights are working nicely. Moving up nicely. Okay. You put the camera up a little bit. Right there. So we got the eight uh, LED lights working. And if you look at them in, in, in like a dark area, it looks like the uh, Street Fighter characters are moving. So that's pretty cool about that. Um, all your buttons are working. They're all lit, which is great. I'm happy about that. I was happy I found how to do that so if I get another set of uh, buttons I have to do that I can do it real quick we got the emulation station working good okay make sure everything's working right I know the uh, the remote for the LEDs are right here and we can get those uh, LEDs to go off whenever we want uh, I gotta figure out a good way to shut the visual off Oh, there we go. That's perfect. But they are working. And again, like I said, it's going to ask for the uh, button layout again. So we're going to have to reprogram the buttons. Everything should be fine after that. There's no issues. Like I said, what we're going to do is hold the A button so I recognize player one. We're going to push uh, up for the on the, on the uh, joystick for up, down, left, right. Start will be your player one button. Select will be your coin button. You got your A for A, B for B, X will be C, Y will be D. Left shoulder and right shoulder will be L1, R1. Left trigger and right trigger will be L2 and R2 down here. Okay. Then we got, it's looking for left thumb. So that's for analog joysticks. We don't need those. We don't, we don't have joysticks uh uh, controllers here with analogs so we're gonna press A and hold it 
So it skips it, let it go, press it and hold it, let it go. And we'll continue doing this till we get to the hotkey option. And we're going to keep doing this. And now we're at the hotkey, it gives you an option to pick any of the uh, buttons again for that hotkey. And again, for my choice, it's going to be L2 right on top and press A to hit OK. And we have to configure uh, controller 2. This is the uh, theme from Dwayne Hurst. Let me zoom into that. This is one of his great themes. I love his work. High quality images. I, I think they're wonderful. You can also set it to do random. So every time you turn on the cabinet, it'll randomly give you a new theme, a new look, which is pretty cool. I'm definitely going to work with this, mess with it. I hope he does it on mine. Um, I'm also a Photoshop, Photoshop enthusiast, so I like playing with Photoshop a lot. Um, definitely going to mess with that and see how that worked out. We're going to set up the control for uh, controller 2 now. So we're going to hit the, uh, the uh, player 1 button for the main menu. We're going to go down to uh, configure input, press A. Are you sure? Press A again. Uh, press A on second player uh, control because we're going to set that up. Press A so it recognizes that and follow the same steps. Up, down, left, right. Uh, player 2 button for start. Uh, coin button down here for select. A for A, B for B, C for X, D for Y. Left shoulder, right shoulder will be L1, R1. Left trigger, right trigger will be L2 and R2. And we're going to press the A button, skip the rest. We don't want those. And then keep going until you get to the hotkey. Even though player 2 hotkey does not work, I still want to program it. It's going to be L2. Press A for OK. And then B to get out of there. And that is working too. So now we got player 2 working. Alright, we could uh, enter a two player game to test that, but I know it's working, so we'll leave it alone. For now, what I want to do is make sure that all my systems. Uh, screen display is working good, so I'm going to jump in a couple of games here for every system and look at the screen and make sure that's working good. We got the new launching screens, each one has its own. Uh, this is Berserk for Atari 2600. I love this game. I, this is one of my games that I first played when I was uh, younger. Atari was my first system that I owned, and um, it was given to me by my aunt, and I don't know why I sold it. I, I was young and stupid and foolish, but I did sell it to give uh, Christmas gifts to my mom and my little brother, and I bought myself a, a big skateboard that I used to go up and down the hallways in the projects. That's, that's for another story. Um, I don't like this black border on most of my games. I know that... Um, Everybody likes the nostalgic and the uh, retro look of having that small screen. So I'm going to change that by going into Retro Arch. And to do that, we're going to hold the uh, L2 button and press L1. Is it L2 and L1? Oh. Oh no, that's loading in. So it's L2 and C. There you go, L2 and C. You're able to load, you're able to save state and load those states when you're playing a game. That I'll show you in another video, but what that does is as you progress in a game and you get better and better and, and, and go further, you could save it in your retro pie and then come back to it and, pl and, and play where you left off. And that's pretty fun for the younger kids that get frustrated when they're constantly dying and constantly going, you know, even though you get more coins and more credits in certain games. But in certain systems like uh, Nintendo or uh, Game Boy or the Genesis that doesn't have that, that credit system, and just gives you a certain amount of players, like four or five players, you can save your state and keep going and learn and progress and keep going and actually beat the game. And you could also add cheats where you don't die in certain games, and that I'll save for another video. But this is Retro Arch. I'm not going to get so deep into it. I'm just going to jump into a couple of settings to fix the screen because it's good to do it when it's on this screen, when it's in the cabinet, so it has you know, a, a feel of, of where I want it to be. So I'm going to jump into some of the settings here and change some of the display settings now on the Atari I like to switch it the aspect ratio from core 
to 16 by 9. I know it looks crazy and it looks weird out, but I like that full screen. I like I like being able to play in that full screen. You know? I like seeing that that aspect. And like I said, this was one of my my favorite games and I loved it as a kid and I love it more now that I'm able to play it again. So this is very enjoyable. Again, L2 and Player 1 to get you out of that game. Now, um, because I did that to that one game, it should do it to all the other ones. Let's double check. It should do it to all the other games on the Atari system. Nope, it didn't. So what we need to do is uh, go back in there. Like I said, I like using Berserk. Go back in there and we're going to do a couple of savings. We're going to save a couple of settings when you exit Retro Arch. So we're going to go back in there by pressing L2 and the C button. Uh, go down to hit the B button to go back. Go to settings. Go into configurations. Put that save configura configuration on exit on. Press the B button to go back. Go to video, aspect ratio again, to 16 by 9. Now L2 and the C button to exit that. Uh, L2 and player 1 to exit the game. And it should have saved it now. Let's see. Let's go back in. And see if it saved the aspect ratio. And yes, it did. And what we're going to do is we're going to test another game and see... If it saved it there, if it didn't, we're going to have to save it, save something else. Let's, let's jump in the blueprint. Yep, we got the full screen, 16 by 9. That's the way I like to play. Um, I'm going to do that to some of the other systems so that the aspect ratio is good and working. So let's jump into Atari 78. Um... I like to pick random games, sometimes the ones I really like. On the 78, we have the Asteroids. Let's pick that one. See Atari 78 splash screen. These are splash screens that I found. I'll leave a link for those if you want to use those. Uh, L2 with C to get into Retro Arch. Back button. Go into Settings. Configuration. Turn that on. B button to go back, video, aspect ratio from 4 to 16 by 9, back, uh, L2 and C, and it saves it. If you see this, uh, let's get this started, player 1. Just want to see if it's working. Advanced intermediate, no, not that. Oh, C button. Certain games, uh, certain systems require different buttons. There it goes, it's working. Got the full aspect ratio. Let's get out of that. Alright, and we're going to go back and we're going to do uh, Daphne. We'll leave as is because that came. That Daphne came in, in the, uh, the image. What came on this image was Arcade, Daphne, Neo Geo. And I left that stuff in there. I didn't really mess with those settings. I left that alone. What I threw in there was the uh, Atari 2678 Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Master, Sega Genesis, Nintendo 64, Nintendo Entertainment, Super Nintendo, Turbo Graphics 16, and Virtual Boy. Giving me a total of uh, 7,000, if I'm not mistaken, 7,750 games all on this uh this image on a 128 image, a 128 gigabyte image, but you can start. It started off with a 64, so you burn the 64 onto a 128. I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to burn all that. Um, you use Etcher to do that, and um, Arcade Punks uh, has all the uh, images. You can get that from there. I'll throw in a link for that, or somebody can throw that in the comments for me, please. Um, other than that. We have all the images, all the um, systems that I like. Um, I'm going to do the Game Boy. Let's start with the Aladdin. 
Um, I'm going to make that a little uh, 16 by 9 as well. I think it looks better. I think to me it looks better when it takes the whole full screen. Um, also on the Game Boy, i got to change the color. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, Retro Arch again, back, settings, configuration. Leave that on. Uh, which one was it? Quick menu. Uh, on options. Inter, in, internal palette. Uh, GB colorization. There you go. You're going to change that to internal. And I like to change this to uh, grayscale. Grayscale. Okay. And then we're going to change the uh, aspect ratio on the video from 4 to 16 by 9. Exit out. And there, you got the black and white. I like it like that. I think it looks better. It looks way better. I know that the uh, Game Boy used to be green and black. But for this system, I think it looks so much better in black and gray. You guys can change it to whatever color. I'll put a link to a video by um, Henry Hacks. If I'm saying his name wrong, I'm sorry. I apologize. I'll put his name on the uh, video. And shout out to him. Uh, Harrison Hacks, I think it is. And um, I'll do a shout out to him. And I appreciate his videos as well. He's taught me a lot. We're going to get out of this. And we're gonna. I'm going to continue. Fast forward with this video a little. And continue to do the rest of the systems. And get them working. To the, the aspect ratio that I want. So we'll just uh, go through these systems real quick. So you don't have to watch the whole uh, setting. Video. There you go. You got, you got the Game Boy all nice and white on there. Exit that out. We're gonna go to Game Boy Color. Um, Game Boy Color, I have to say, it's a pretty good system for a handheld. It had a lot of good games. What it did, it it took a lot of the Game Boy games and a lot of Game Boy Advance, and they threw some color on that. They also made a lot of you know good games on the side after that. So I, I really like that Game Boy Color. I had the original Game Boy, so I really didn't have a Game Boy Color. My wife has a Game Boy Color. I'm trying to convince her to sell it to me. Or maybe I'll just sneak it one day in a video and we could uh we could uh we could sponsor we could uh we could showcase that Game Boy Color. I think she has a green one. Neon green. I think she has cartridges for it too. We gotta we gotta double check. But um that's that and that looks good. We're gonna move on to the next system. Uh, Sega Master. A lot of these systems, like I said, I like the way they look in the 16 by 9. I like having full access and full screen effect on my uh, my arcade cabinet. I don't wanna I don't wanna be playing systems with with small little screens. It's just pointless. And there's a lot of people that do, do modifications on these arcade cabinets and put bigger screens. And, you know, the purpose of that is if you want bigger screens, you know, might as well make the, uh, the playing experience bigger as well. So there you go. We got that one for the uh, Sega Master. Sega Genesis, play any game, let's start whatever. Each loading screen has its own system name, which is pretty cool. Something I messed with a while back with some images I found on the internet. Oh, we got here the uh, 
Nintendo 64. I think I left those alone. I didn't mess with those. Uh, Neo Geo, I didn't mess with those either. Nintendo. Let's play the game, start the game. I wanted to show you. Let me show you. See that black border out there? I don't like it. And then this this image had um, overlays. So the overlay on top of another overlay on the uh, display it just made everything so visually complicated and very hard to look at. And I didn't I didn't I didn't like that. So I had to take those overlays off and just make these screens bigger. I think it's so much better that way. But like I said, it, it's. It's to each own preference, you know. Everybody likes something different. Full screen, I like that. Get out of that. We got a few more systems to go. Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo was another system that I really enjoy. I have the uh, Super NES Classic. I have a Super Nintendo. If anyone's questioning whether I have all these games, the answer is no. I have some of them. I don't have all of them. I don't think... I, I know there's hard collectors out there that have the whole entire collection of certain systems and stuff like that. Just to cover, you know, cover their, their, their self on having these retro games and stuff like that. But at one time, I did have a lot of uh, games and a lot of uh, systems. And unfortunately, I lost that in the uh, Sandy Hurricane that came to New York, everything was in my uh, my basement in the crawl space where I kept everything you know that was where I would go to do most of my stuff like now like, that I have a garage and when that hurricane came I had like a good good six feet five feet of water down there and it just damaged everything and I'll, I'll post some pictures I'll show some pictures in the video so you can see what I'm talking about and I had to throw away a lot of uh, stuff. I had to throw away my original Super Nintendo, my original Nintendo. I had PlayStation One. Uh, luckily, I had I had some Xboxes. I had my uh, my original Game Boy, my Turbo Graphics. I really owned and and had these systems with the games. And I was gonna, you know, eventually take everything out and display them, you know, in my new home. But I never got the chance to. And Sandy, uh, thanks to Sandy. That, that, that didn't happen. But at time, I, you know, in time, I, I got to buy everything all over again. Other than the uh, Turbo Graphic or the PlayStation 1. I got the PlayStation 1 Classic. I got the Super Nintendo Classic. I got a Super Nintendo I bought in a flea market. I got a Nintendo I bought at the flea market. The best condition that I could get. I have the cartridge that I want for it. You know, I didn't go crazy buying more cartridges. Even though I could do that. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do a game room... Um, a game room tour of all the stuff I have and show you that I did replace a couple of things not everything you know this this hobby be can become expensive and very um, very tedious and when you have something tragic happen like a hurricane or a tornado or something bad like that and you lose all your personal stuff it's very um, heartbreaking and it's very difficult to accept and to this day I still don't believe it happened because I I, I sometimes am in the garage and I say, oh, well, I had that and I could go get that. And, and in reality, I don't have it no more. It's gone. I had to throw it out. So um, to be able to do this, it's, it's a blessing right now because it's helping me get back some of my collection and some of my childhood in, in one little computer like the Raspberry Pi. You know, and of course the uh, community out there that that does this that does the uh, retro gaming and and the retro collection collecting and and I appreciate you guys for a lot you know supplying the stuff that we need like the uh, ROMs and and the software and all that you know it's it's not for you know my ill I'm not doing this for uh, selling purposes or or you know to try to make money off of this I'm doing this because I love video games and I love playing classic games and I'm doing the DIY videos to show that people in wheelchair can 
do these type of things and these type of uh, these type of modifications and hobbies. So it's not for any type of gain or purpose here. This cabinet, I'm doing it for my 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 daughter. I paid for everything. I purchased everything. You know, it's for her to enjoy gaming as as much as I enjoy gaming. And I love to be able to pass that down to her. So. Please understand that. And, and, and don't think ill of me. Or or anything. Otherwise. Because I would never. Try to use this. As a game for anything. But. We're almost down to our last few systems. I think that was a turbo graphic that I just did. Uh, Virtual Boy, I don't touch. I think I did Super Nintendo. Let me see. Let me try Virtual Boy. See how that looks. I think this is already at a big screen. Yeah, I think the core was perfect. Alright. The core was perfect for that one. Alright, so we're done with the uh, the systems. Um, I have to add one game that I uh, found. Thanks to... Um, I'll put his name on the video. Um, another YouTuber. He was doing some gameplay. And he found a game that I used to play way back. A long time ago in the arcade settings so what I got right now in front of me is a USB keyboard and it's connected to the Pi so that I can get to the uh, some of the settings because I have to connect the Wi-Fi on this so we're gonna go to options and I'm gonna connect the Wi-Fi so I can communicate with the computer in the uh, house and throw in a game that I I think it was called Quir uh, Quirks Quirl We'll come back to that and definitely get that working. But it looks like this. This is the Game Boy version. It's more like a Tetris type of game. And it's pretty cool. But I'll definitely get that working. Find out why that didn't come up. Um, other than that, that's it for now, guys. Um, I'm waiting on the uh, clear panel. Uh, we're going to mount everything in the back as well. But since I gotta um, do that, we'll do that in a second. I'm waiting for the clear panel, clear, um, clear overlay, so I can put that on this, so we don't wear this out as we're playing. Um, we're gonna do the uh, skin as well from Arcade Graphics. All right, and then we're going to uh, try to wrap this up this weekend, if not next week, and get everything done. Uh, please subscribe. Like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys are thinking about the video, let me know how you feel. Uh, I will be doing more videos of other things besides arcade cabinets. Uh, give me time, but um, let's get back to the, let's just mount everything up, let's go get that game in there and mount everything up, and then uh, we'll take it from there.